Hi, welcome to the Colour Circle Studio again. I'm Lindy Witten. This is not my home studio, it's just where I teach class and I just wanted to uh, do a small demo about clouds today. So up here I have just a strip of three different sorts of clouds. And, uh, clouds can be really, really different depending on the weather, the time of day, the light conditions and the one thing they're not is just plain grey or black and white. So up the top here we've got a really colourful one. You can see lots of pinks and purples in there. The second one is softer, not as dark as the other set of clouds, uh, although it still has shadow and light in it. And the bottom one is backlit, so you get that really rim, that silver lining to the cloud. So I'm going to start with the colourful one up here because sometimes it's hard to get your clouds colourful. We, we think of grey, we think of white, we think of black. Let's try and make a nice colourful cloud there. Some of the things we'll talk about are perspective in the clouds as well as we go. So in this one, we're sort of focusing in on the clouds, but even so, as you go back, you see less of the bottoms of the clouds, and as you come closer towards you, you see more of the bottoms of the clouds. That's just natural law of perspective. Think about looking up. Uh, and the, the clouds are like boxes. When the boxes are further away from you and you're looking at them at a distance, you're seeing the sides of them and not the bottoms. And when they're just straight above you and you're looking up, you're seeing the bottom of the boxes. So think about that when you're thinking about clouds and it might help you with that. And also, because of aerial perspective, the further you look away from you towards the horizon, the lighter and uh, not so bright are the colours are going to be because there's more layers of dust and particles and pollution and atmosphere between you and the clouds and the closer to you the bluer the sky and the, the brighter the colours and the more intense the colours in the clouds. But as I said this is more of a portrait of the clouds so let's just get going. So importantly we need to mass in the um, broad outline of the clouds and I'm just using a soft pink sort of colour here uh, to just put in a, a rough outline. Now remember, nobody's going to see this except you. So if you want to change the cloud shape to get a better portrait, go right ahead. So I'm just massing in those, those shapes now. Just, and then I'm going to put in some values so I've got some idea of, of what the values are like as well. And then I'll think about the sky as well. The sky follows the same idea of, of atmospheric perspective that above me, closer to me, it's going to be bluer and further away it's going to be lighter and you can see the gradation in that. So um, I just want to put in the deeper, darker colours now of down here. So I'm just going to and really softly, softly run that in, just so I'm massing it in but I'm not filling up all the sand, uh, all the sandpaper, all the paper grip surface here. I just want to have an idea of where the darks are. All this is going to be dark around here, all through that. That's a whole layer of darkness. This is going to be lighter down here. And this is another area of, of darks through here. So that's sort of got my darks in. Uh, and then I want to do sort of a medium uh, and I'm just going to call the colour of the paper the, the medium colour. So I'm just going to give the edges here where it's a little bit lighter. That's the real light area of the cloud there. And then not so light there. And I'm just using pinks at the moment to establish The vague, that one's going to be a little bit more pink, so I'm actually going in for a quite a deep pink there, just again to get the idea of the shapes. Now these very dark colours you might think when you're looking at clouds outside are just grey, but they have all sorts of colours in them. I'm going to start layering those in a minute to get the sort of lovely greys, luminous kind of greys. Now you can buy so sets of box sets of greys. I have one here. 
which I think I've shown you before, which is the Great American Artworks, greys, and there you can see them. And they're ones that have been already formulated for you, but you don't have to use that. You can use a triadic, you can use a triadic colour scheme to make your cut, uh, your greys by layering in there. So if I was doing that, I would take a purple, a green, and an orange, all of the same value. It's important to get them at the same values. Um, I also mustn't forget uh, the sky in there. So I'm going to put the sky in before I continue on and then we'll start with those three colours. So, this... so I've got a very bright block there. It's not going to stay that bright, but I haven't got my sky set with me. So just putting on that and then I'm just going to knock it back with a bit of that blue. And then just lightly laying it over. And a tip for skies is to not over blend, just lay in those beautiful colours and just let the pastel blend it a bit and not get too excited about if you want a lovely luminous sky. So here I've got some nice luminosity coming through. I'm going to put a little bit of that down here, but not much, and then I'm going to go back and put it with this and put a lot of that this time. So I'm just, I'm going to then just this colour on its own down here. And as I come down, I'm going to lighten it off, so I'll just put that colour in. And the lovely violety colour from the um, paper is showing through as well and giving it a nice little dancy. There. I'm putting in a little bit of an aquary colour as I come down. It just gets a little bit greener towards the horizon. So I'm just popping that in now. And I'm, I'm going to lighten that up as well because we don't want it quite so. Give a little touch of the sky hole there. So in again I'll come with that same grey sort of blue. But not covering it all up so it dances a little bit. So here I'm coming in there with this one. Just moving my hand around. You sort of dance with your hand so it's not just going in one direction. And then I've got a very almost white blue you know, just to, to lighten up the bottom section a little bit. Down in this darker segment now, I'm just going to start laying in, and it's going to end up with a more purpley um, look at the end. So what I'm going to start with is some of the other colours. And I'm just really softly popping those in. And because they're triangular opposite each other on the colour wheel, they're going to mix up to make a grey for me. So I started off with that. It's a sort of a red orange, and then I'm popping in a green. I'm just laying that any yellow which way over the, the areas that I want to be grey, and then back in with the purple there. And it's just a matter of keeping your hand nice and soft there, so that when it lays on it's not too thick. And I'm starting to get a nice sort of grayed off purpley colour there. And it's full of interest. Now, I said don't blend this guy, but let's blend this. So just take the side of your finger and give it a little bit of a soft swirl around. And that just pushes the colours into each other even more and makes the grey even more interesting. And around the edges you can be nice and wispy and loose just as the clouds become wispy around the edges there. Now it's just a matter of practice how soft you want to make the edges and how much pressure you put on with your finger and how much you blend. And if you think you've over blended, you can just go and put more layers on if you've got a nice toothy paper, like a gridded sandpaper. This one is um, uh, the Colorfix Smooth which hasn't got as much texture as the Cans and Mitens text, but it still will hold quite a lot of pastel. And if you get 
So you've got far too much pastel on there and, and it becomes a dead area that you can't actually put any more pastel in. Just remove some of the brush, start again, or just spray a little bit of fixing on that one area and that will help give you back a bit of tooth so you can put in more. So I, I'm just scooting my finger, side of my finger around there. And because this is not so gritty, it doesn't rough your fingers up quite so much as the other one. This is not quite how I want it to be. I actually need more. I failed to put in my my um, road map as well as I should have there. I want a bit more in there. So I'm just going back into the blue zones. It's going to be quite dark. And put that in. You can see how I'm making the wispy edges there. But just be careful that they don't take on the shape of your fingertips. So the greys are coming along nicely there. The thing to remember too about clouds is uh, they're, even, they're, even though the darks look very dark, they're not going to be as dark as the land mass because they're creating a shadow on the land mass, so the shadow's going to be darker than they are. So here we don't have the land mass underneath because we're just looking at the clouds. And, so we don't have to worry so much about that. But if you've got the land underneath, remember that almost always the clouds, even when they're dark, are going to be lighter than the land mass. So down in here, it's a more pinky colour. There's a bit of this deeper colour down the bottom, and I'm just going to layer in some of my greys there. And it doesn't hurt to have a bit of the sky coming through because in some places the clouds are lighter. And here, and then you do get the um, you do get to see a bit of the sky behind it. So mixing a bit of that sky colour with your greys there at the edges just makes it more believable. Like that's the thinner, wispier part of the cloud. So that's lovely sort of greys coming out here. And the tip is whatever you think the predominant colour of your greys is. So it's a purple grey or green grey or brown, grey, put that on as your last layer and that tends to give it that dominant effect. So now I've got some beautiful colours coming through there. I think this is too much down here again, so I might just layer in some more of the clouds here, maybe a little cloud hole, some of that green is going on. The really important thing when you're making these colourful greys is to use three colours of the same value. Otherwise there's too much of a value shift in the shadows and we don't want too much. And there we go, that's... You can see in my hand I've got a whole range of pinchy pink colours and that's going to start going into here. So, so the salmon pinky colours come in and that will down here working its way even the shadowed areas have some highlights, so we put a little bit of this in there. And then all through here, it's really glowing from the, the sun behind it, so let's put those in. And just a couple of different deeper ones now behind it as it transitions into the... So even within the the darker shadowed areas of the clouds, you end up with some highlighted areas, and that's what I'm doing now, putting these pinker colours in there, along the edges of some of those dark areas, and underneath there. And then as you come out towards the edge, it becomes pinker, so one of the pinks. And again, you can layer these over the top of each other, which helps to blend them and gives nice gradations of colour within each of those areas. So, getting lovely and colourful there. I want a deeper shadow in there, so I'm just going back to my... So this is a paired sort of purpley grey, and you can see it's not as luminous as the other one, but then if I take another prepared, maybe a blue or sort of colour and put in it, I start to build up some interest there. 
ya empezando smooth off there and I'm going to bring it into up into some of these areas, just little touches of it. And back in here we'll go for that as well. Scrumbling it over there and letting some of the colour behind it show through. And then some really lighter pinks. It's never really white in the clouds because there's always sunlight coming in on them. decide how much you want to blend. And just start off lightly just to soften them off. Clouds are made up of water vapour so they're very luminous because the water holds the light and refracts the light, the, the water droplets. So you, you don't want to over blend or you lose that luminosity. On the other hand, they're very soft, so you want that wispy kind of look about them. Down here, I want a little bit more of the deeper pinks. Just a couple of touches of the coral sort of colour. I'm just going to give that a little blend off. adding in some touches that aren't in the photo because I've left more of the sky coming through so those clouds there are going to get a nice room of colour and warmth they don't have in the photo. So if I now want to pop in some trailing edges that would be the time to do it. I have some trailing edges up here and all I'm doing is taking my finger I'm just pulling pulling a little bit away from the just to make it a little bit wispy. And I can do that further by just dropping in a little bit of pastel very softly and then giving it the finger blend treatment. Because it's thin here the clouds, the wispy clouds, you'll see quite with the sky coming through so when you blend it mixes the sky colour with that, that cloud colour and makes them a little bit more wispy you can have a little bit coming off with that here. If you think about the way if there's a breeze the way the wind's blowing then that will sort of indicate the way the, the wisps are going to go. Just put a few wispy clouds in there, and a little bit of wispy there. And maybe I want to sharpen up the edges slightly. So I'll just take uh, my soft. I'll just make a few. Because even though the clouds are I should 
can blow shit up. Even though the clothes are soft, and you've got a lot of soft edges, you also got a, a few sharper, well-defined areas where the sun's sort of backlighting it. shift in the shadows. Not too much, but just a wee bit. Make that a little bit more interesting. Sort of coming over the top of that, and I haven't indicated that very well, so I'm just going to go back in with my, my duo of purple, green, and the brown colour, and just make that cloud drift, drift across the front of that one. up from there so I've got a bit of a diagonal going so you should be thinking about your composition too and I've kind of lost my composition a bit in thinking about these greys so I'm just making that a little bit more of a diagonal there deeper and darker are the shadows on this. So I'm going back in there again and just trying to reinforce those a little bit. Didn't quite make them as deep as I wanted to. The class can give any minute so I'm just about to wind this up. So there you have it, how to do colourful clouds without having to use the um, already the greys that are already in your set. Just uh, you, in your shadows use a triad of um, secondary colours, so a, a, a purple, a green and an orange colour, and that will make beautiful greys in there. Keep them soft, don't over blend the sky, but blend the clouds a little bit to give them that wispy soft look. Hope you enjoyed that uh, demonstration on colourful clouds and how to make those beautiful greys. And I'll see you next time back in my studio because this is my last uh, lesson here in the Colour Circle Studio for this term. Thanks for watching. See you later.